So what's the PA1 to PA10? Is that different measure of positive effect? 10 different measurement? Yes, of these are separate. Oh. These are uh, indicators of positive effect. So these are measured variables, PA1 to PA10. Uh, so it's like uh, energetic, happy. Um, does anyone know any other typical? Strong, proud, excited. We're at five now, I think. <laughs> so there's 10 of them. Uh, they were observed. So, and then typically people use uh, some scores or the average. But here I wanted to look at them separately and have a factor model for them. So, so they are observed and then they are split into a within and a between person part, which means that if you talk about PA to PA10, uh, PA1 to PA10 at the within person level, you're talking about them here, the within person part. When you talk about them at the between person level, uh, you talk about the mean part. So you are using that as a continuous variable, right? Yes. And can, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. can you change it to the categorical variable and making that as item response theory? That would be a question for Teomir. But ah, uh, there he is. Uh, <laughs> categorical latent <laughs> variable or categorical observed? So categorical observed. Ca so categorical indicators of the factory instead of continuous. I I'm going to show an example of that this afternoon. Yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> We have to say something about it, though, but yeah. No, not now, but you have to tell the program. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so I'm, I'm, you know, this might not be the best way to do it. I, th I think it's okay for positive affect, but for negative affect, I think, but when you have the strong skewness, yeah. then you may want to go to a categorical. It's tricky because I think they use the seven point Likert scale. So then yeah, they say, oh, seven categories is like almost, you can think of it as continuous. But of course, not everybody is using all the seven uh, points. So some people might have a nice normally looking distribution on those seven categories, and then other people have more like, yeah. And I have, I have a slide about this for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I also have a question on process. Do you, so do you do CFA? Some, do you do a CFA first to see how just the measurement of positive affects, for example, just holds? first before you get into all this, or because... What do you mean? Just confirmatory uh, factor analysis, yeah, you mean? Yeah, because that's see. the measurement part of the model that might be messed up, right? Because that might mess up your model yeah. fit. So one thing we have not really discussed yet is fit measures. So here, when you are doing time series analysis, you don't have fit measures like you do when you do uh, structural equation modeling. And also when you have DSEM, you don't have fit measures like CFA or chi-square or something like this to determine whether the model fits well. And the problem, the problem here is, if you have time series data, you don't have a saturated model that you can compare to. So you can compare to a null model where you say nothing is correlated to anything, not over time, nor that would be a, a null model, but we know that's wrong. So we know that this is probably, it's always gonna be better than the null model, but we don't have a saturated model. So determining whether the factor structure makes sense uh, is not so straightforward. So you just that, trust that it's a scale because that's, that's... Yeah, it's like, like okay, this is what people have okay. been using all the time. Okay. So, but of course, yeah, you can question whether it's one underlying dimension or whether it should be multiple But factors, there are really. cross-sectional data uh, on these items from which you can derive. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't hmm. want to use cross-sectional results to make statements about what the factor structure would look like Good at the point. within or the between person level. But there's a question over there. Thank you. Um, my colleague behind me and I might be the only ones asking questions about uh, productivity of software engineers, but we have a data pool from a thousand students uh, who took a course and we're interested in a couple latent capabilities in them. One is the speed with which they work and the other one is something uh, I'm calling quality conscientiousness. But we only have from each student about 10 data points over time, but they progressively get in the course uh, more and more um, ability, capability, maybe. Uh, so some is inherent, some is added by the course. 
We only have 10 data points per student. You can see where this is going. Uh, normally, programmers vary quite significantly in their ability, so there's a large amount of variance, total variance, um, to be explained. Um, any comments on the, on the power of uh, teasing out the individual trait capability that's the same over time, but then maybe a component that's added by the course mm -hmm. for the two traits. I'm, I'm really looking at a very small number of traits, not yeah. 10. Yeah. And you're doing it with factor models or just some scores? Or? I'm using <laughs> um, a rather uh, unusual machine learning tool called Causal Learning, developed by folks at Carnegie Mellon University where he and I work. But you know we're we're looking at M plus uh, for a variety of reasons uh, to supplement what we're currently doing. Yeah. So I don't know quite. Yeah. yeah. So I think so when you have just ten measurement points mm -hmm. per person. Yeah. Studying individual differences in the dynamics mm -hmm. would be probably yeah, That's what a we little feared. bit too much. It still, you can still do multi-level modeling, mm -hmm. and I think that's a good idea to separate within and between person variants. Mm -hmm. You can do this with as few as three time points. Um, so I think that would be definitely worthwhile. And so you could use the DSEM uh, approach, but without any of the random effects for the, the slopes, for instance and add uh, predictors for different phases or like interventions or whatever you're looking at. It might also, yeah, so 10 is like sort of like a borderline case where you go like, is it better to look at it in, in wide format where you say we have 10 repeated measures, you know, versus in long format. And I think it also depends like, so w would these 10 measurements be aligned across people? Is it like, you know, measured at the first month and then the second month and so forth? Or is it like some people are measured just like the first and the second and the third month, like up to 10, whereas the others are measured later on? For across all 1,000 programmers, there are nine interventions. So there's like a, a, a zeroth measure or a first measure. Then there's intervention number one, and they all receive right, the yeah. same ten, nine interventions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But not, not exactly like it would, at the same time. Yeah. It could be actually yeah, 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 a few yeah. years apart, yeah. but it's going through the that same. That sounds like it would be easier to yeah. deal with in long formats, because then you could say for person one, you have a dummy variable that, you know, observation one and two are prior to the intervention, and then the other ones are after the intervention. Whereas for another person, the change happens between observation five and six. So you would have a time varying predictor, dummy, dummy variable, that can have a different time of change for different people. I'd just like to add also that I will talk more about the, the requirements when it comes to sample size in terms of number of time points in individuals. And for, for the empty models without the random slopes, I think it could work with 10 time points when you have that kind of large number of individuals. But I'll get back yeah. to that tomorrow. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was going to add another issue that uh, you brought up is the, uh, you know, the fact that the, uh, actually the ability actually changes over time. Uh, and so um, to estimate the DSM models, we do not assume stationarity of the model. So, you know, you can have a trend in the, uh, you know, in the factor scores. Uh, 